Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the Inno 3D iChill GTX 1080 Ti X4 Ultra here is one of those cards that I don't believe was particularly rare when it was released in 2017, but it seems to be a bit of a hard to find item on the used market these days. I've seen a handful of X3 Ultras which share the same three front fans, but this model with the tiny fourth fan doesn't come up for sale very often. I found this one on eBay for £280, which at the time of purchase also made it the cheapest 1080 Ti of any kind available, so I got quite lucky. I've owned the iChill 980 Ti in the past, and that remains one of my favourite graphics cards because of the similar quirky design, so I guess this has to be up there right along with it by default. Aside from the aesthetically pleasing lights that change colour depending on the GPU load then, what sets this 1080 Ti apart from others? Well the first thing would be the extra topside fan which draws cool air in and down. I'm not sure how effective it really is but it just looks pretty good in my opinion. I'm sure the more fans the better here because this 1080 Ti is clocked quite a bit higher than a reference card. There's a bump to the base, boost and memory clocks so the iChill Ultra Airboss here probably does a bit better than a standard card even today. With that said, the factory overclock meant that my experience with this Airboss card wasn't 100% smooth. One particular game, Far Cry 6, didn't agree with the increased speeds, and when loading the game, my entire system restarted. The only way to fix this was to reduce the clock speeds. This was the only game of the 8 or so tested today that gave me trouble, and it was at any resolution too, so if you do find this card or any factory overclock 1080 Ti and you find that Far Cry 6 crashes, hopefully I've answered why. If we continue with Far Cry 6 as we move on to the gaming tests then, you'll notice that even at 2560x1440, the iChill 1080 Ti does a fantastic job at maintaining at least 60fps. This is still very much a solid 1440p card for the most part, though one or two titles will be best enjoyed at 1080. I've chosen the resolution and settings that I'd personally play at throughout this video when using the 1080 Ti on a daily basis. The only game I actually set to 1920x1080 today was Cyberpunk 2077. This is by no means necessary at lower settings, but if you want to opt for a higher preset like I did here, then 1080p is what you'll want to use to hit at least 60fps on average. I also had crowd density turned down a bit for the sake of the processor, which in this case is my i3-12300, a chip that despite its four physical cores, will make a pretty solid pairing for an older, high-end card like this one. In CPU intensive titles like Cyberpunk though, more cores would certainly be helpful I'm sure, if you want to make use of higher crowd settings for example. That said, my i3 and 1080 Ti experience was a pretty solid one overall. Deathloop, despite its demanding nature, ran really well with the 1080 Ti at 1440p. I went for the high preset straight away and thought we might be heading for a stuttery mess, but to my surprise the game remained fairly smooth. I think it's cards with 4 gigs of VRAM and less that Deathloop has the biggest problems with, because even the lower presets use more memory than this, and it can lead to a not so great experience. We're using around 8GB with these settings. I think Nvidia's decision to go with 11 gigs of GDDR5X back in the day for the 1080 Ti was a really good one because it's probably helped extend the life of this GPU by a little bit, though it'll still be a solid offering for a while yet, I think. Especially thanks to the inclusion of FSR in some games. It's a shame DLSS doesn't work with GTX cards though. Elden Ring's 60fps cap is easily reached with the iChill 1080 Ti at 1440p high. Grass and shader quality were set to medium because they seem to be a couple of the most intensive settings and reducing them doesn't have that much of a visual impact. The game looks great at 2560x1440 and I was a little bit surprised by the 1080 Ti's capabilities here. My surprise just continued on throughout today's tests actually. Many people test the 1080 Ti every year and say it's still a beast or whatever, but it's not until you get one and test it yourself that this sentiment really kicks in. Five years on and the 1080 Ti continues to prove itself. What a great investment this was for anyone who bought one on launch day, especially a factory overclocked one like this. Forza Horizon 5 ran nicely at 2160p or 4K with the high preset. 
I bumped the resolution up a bit because of the fantastic optimization of this game and as I said I wanted to test the games today based on the settings I'd use. I definitely stick with 2160p for Forza because even during multi-competitor races we were seeing average 1 and 0.1% figures of at least 60 continuously. I could have gone a bit higher with the settings and dropped the resolution to 1440p for a similar experience but as always it's always down to personal preference. God of War at 1080p, sorry 1440p, ran well too. All of today's games could probably run at 4k just fine with lower settings including this one, but I'd like to try and find a balance between visual quality and performance fidelity. I wanted the games to look good and run well, as opposed to one or the other, and I think I achieved that today with this card. Continuing with God of War, and it's safe to say that this is how I play the game, if you've been keeping an eye on the card's temperature throughout this video, then let me know what you think below. Is it staying cooler or running warmer than you'd expected? Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p with Xbox One X equivalent settings runs great. If you want to run these settings at 4K, then you'll get about 50 FPS, which is also more than playable in my opinion, and of course a better result than the Xbox console itself can deliver. But I felt like targeting 60 was only natural with a card like this one, and dropping the resolution was the quickest way to meet and exceed that target. Again, lower settings at 4K would mean at least 60 FPS, so bear that in mind too. I spent a good half an hour running around Saint Denis causing carnage and the game held up very well throughout the entirety of that. My only gripe with this card so far, or gripe so that Far Cry 6 breaks it when running with the stock overclocked speeds, and the cooler hangs over the PCI Wi-Fi slot on my motherboard so I can't use that, but I've got a backup dongle for such emergencies. Speaking of which, I should have gone with a wired connection for the final test. I should clarify that any judders you see here are caused by my internet connection and not the card in Warzone. Warzone actually ran well at 1440p with high settings and SMAA set to 1x. The weird judders and freezes, however, if they're coming across on video, were caused by my Wi-Fi internet dongle and I definitely should have plugged in the Ethernet cable for this one. All in all the Inno 3D iChill X4 Airboss 1080 Ti Ultra, close enough, is still a solid 1080p and even 1440p card in 2022, even more so than a reference design that has standard clocks. It's big, bulky and the design is surely not for everyone, but I love finding GPUs like this online and I just know I'm going to end up keeping it. After all, why not? It's still perfect for my needs and it's more than enough for most CPU benchmarks we do on the channel as well. With GPU prices dropping like they are, look out for better cards at lower prices and be cautious that a lot of miners or ex-miners are probably offloading their old hardware right about now. If like me you are a collector of sorts any caution might go out the window, but as always do your homework before committing to buy anything and with all that said, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of this beast below, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.